We've often talked about hydrogen power here on the money. It's a particular interest of mine, as you may know. Now we've got HGVs fueled by hydrogen. We've got JCB diggers fueled by hydrogen. People in the industry talk to me about potentially cargo ships being fueled by hydrogen. Tell us about your project. There are a lot of electric cars on the road today, large variety out there, and not a lot of electric trucks. And the reason is trucks go out for eight, nine, ten hours of work a day, whereas cars tend to go for one and a half. The average car drives one and a half hours a day. Lithium ion batteries and electricity is an amazing energy source for vehicles. Uh, it's uh, abundant and cheap, but it has those range limits. So what we do is a dual energy approach. We use lithium ion batteries as our primary energy. We charge them at night from normal chargers. But to remove any risk of not being able to complete the day or to go farther and heavier, we back it up with the greatness of a hydrogen fuel cell system. And all that is for the point of we want to drive a lot of miles per day. That's every mile you drive on electricity is so much cheaper than driving a diesel truck when the economics work fleets will buy a lot of trucks. Asher Bennett, it strikes me, having watched this sector for some time, that ministers are underplaying the potential of hydrogen. Um, certainly that's what um, various people across the sector think. Do you think we... Do you think that's the case? Do you think hydrogen could be a big part of the answer to our energy uh, future? So hydrogen certainly has a great place in decarbonizing our economy. Certainly we want to replace all dirty hydrogen where you, uh, for example, for making fertilizer with green hydrogen. Along the way, we want to use that great, the great uh, advantages of hydrogen to electrify and change other industries. Trucks is a very important part. They're a big part of the problem of carbon. And so we're taking those advantages and using it in a very practical way to get a lot of trucks on the road. In the future, in a decade, maybe batteries uh, alone will be the solution. It'll probably be, like what we're doing today, a balance for different applications. You'll want a different size of battery and different amounts of hydrogen. Now, the beauty, of course, of hydrogen is that the only emission is water, but you have to create the hydrogen using, usually, electrolysis, and you need power for that electrolysis. A danger is, of course, that we use so-called brown hydrogen, where the electrolysis is fueled by um, carbon uh, fuels, oil and gas. Uh, surely we should be using yellow hydrogen, which is fueled by atomic energy to do the electrolysis, or even green hydrogen, where we need renewable, use renewable energy to generate the electrolysis to generate the hydrogen. That is a danger, isn't it? To what extent do you think we can wean ourselves off fossil fuels as this hydrogen revolution unfolds, as I believe it will, and you clearly believe it will, to make sure that we're using green hydrogen so we're not just pushing the problem somewhere else? I fully agree with you, and we are very focused on using green or low-carbon hydrogens. There, as you said, there are different types out there, and to use more and more of it. Even if you're only using green hydrogen, one would consider, let's just charge the truck with the, that green uh, kilowatt hour coming out of the solar or wind farm, because when you go through the hydrogen system, electrolysis, and then through the fuel cell, you are losing energy along the way, but it has great advantages. No, if you want to get a lot of trucks on the road, you also have to use the benefit of hydrogen, and we are very focused on using the green and or other low carbon hydrogens. That's our goal. And not using more than you need because we also use direct grid electricity. Very practical question to end, Asha Bennett, if I may. How much are these trucks going to cost the most basic unit compared to their diesel equivalents? And when will they be available? So you have to understand electric trucks cost more than their diesel comparisons. There's a lot of expensive components on there, but they're much cheaper to operate if you drive enough miles per day. And that's what we're focusing on. So if you look at the economics, uh, in the lifetime cost of operating a diesel truck, typically two thirds of the cost might go to the oil and gas industry. In our case, the purchase price is much higher, but the monthly fuel and maintenance cost is much, much lower, lower 
much better you know, now. 50% it's a more than a diesel people. truck, 100% more, three times more, just roughly. And when? Uh, depending on the different variants we have, it's between two to two and a half times the cost of a diesel truck. But you can save money from the first month you use it if you lease the truck. Because then you're, you're paying a higher lease cost. You're paying a very low energy cost and you're on, this, on par with leasing a diesel truck if you drive enough miles per day. I'll say that again and again. Asher Bennett, really interesting. I'd like to get you back on the show to have a more...